we now have a good solid month plus of data to go by. And that's key because now we've gone through two incubation cycles of this virus, right? It's 14 days. So we've gone through at least two of them with the data that we're going to look at, if maybe even more, all right? And you have the approach that Sweden took, which I advocated from the beginning, uh, which was limited lockdown. Don't have, you know, let's not have, uh, you know, 15,000 people at a basketball arena, fine. But, um, you know, closing everything down, shutting everything down, ending your way of life, uh, securing the, uh, sequestering the healthy. Um, I, I just didn't think that was a good strategy from the very beginning. And Sweden took a lot of what people like me were suggesting and put it into practice. Traditional, what we used to call herd immunity, all right, in fighting plagues before uh, you know, the world came up with things like glorious magic vaccines that they actually still don't have for most things in this world, including a SARS virus. This is how we had to fight plagues for thousands of years was a version of what Sweden is doing vis-a-vis -vis what uh, the rest of the West is doing. And now we have data that we can compare rather than just a week of a snapshot or a couple of weeks. We've had a couple of uh, maybe three full cycles of this virus. And let's take a look and see how Sweden is doing against the rest of its neighbors, considering all the outrage about, you remember the outrage about what Sweden was doing, right? And I can't sure. believe this. They hate their people and their grandkids in Sweden, right? You remember hearing that stuff? I do remember that. All right. Let's start with this chart. This is the number of daily reported COVID-19 SARS-2 coronavirus cases in the UK and Sweden per million population through April the 15th. All right. So one of these things, the blue, if you're watching on Blaze TV, the, 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 the blue is Sweden. The red is the UK. And this is deaths, not just cases. Oh, not just cases. Yep. Thank you. Okay. I, I misread it. Thank you. Number of daily reported deaths, all right, in the, in, in, in the UK versus Sweden. Thank you for that correction, Aaron. That line, do you notice a difference, a stark difference in those two lines there, Mr. Vanderplatz? We really do, especially as you get closer to the end of those two, uh, where you see Sweden's dropping off and UK's holding steady and still inclining. Especially because about a week and a half ago at this time, Nate Silver and all of the intelligentsia, you know, when Sweden hit that peak there at about April 6th, what are they doing there? I can't believe it. They hate their people. Well, a week later, by the way, the guy that is engineering Sweden's program, he was the original founding director of the European Union's Center for Infectious Research. He was its original director at the formation of the EU. That's who is overseeing Sweden's program. Yeah, you know, just a moron. He doesn't know anything, right? Mm. So that's part one. Let's take a look at this. Lockdown democracies with higher total coronavirus cases per million, so per capita, than Sweden as of 9 a.m. Eastern yesterday. All right? Israel, which probably has the most... Gretchen Whitmer thinks Israel has gone too far. All right. I mean, Netanyahu was seeing protest in Israel yesterday. Israel has the most draconian lockdown, I think, of any country in the West. Israel still has more cases per million people than Sweden does, as does the UK, as does Germany, as does France, Italy, Ireland, Switzerland, Belgium and Spain. How about this number? Lockdown democracies with higher total coronavirus death per capita than Sweden as of 9 a.m. Eastern on Sunday. Belgium, Spain, Italy, France, UK, Netherlands, and Switzerland, even their surrounding countries, have more per capita death than Sweden does. How about this one? Lockdown democracies lagging behind Sweden in per capita testing. As of 9 a.m. Eastern on Sunday, France, the U.K., Poland, and Greece are still behind Sweden, who will openly admit they're not doing a lot of aggressive testing because they're just assuming herd immunity and they're assuming it's got a far higher infectious rate than what the testing is. So they're not pouring a bunch of resources into testing the way the U.S. and Germany is. And still, there are several European countries, including France and the U.K., who are pouring far bigger resources into testing than Sweden is, and they still lag behind Sweden in per capita testing. And then I thought, let's really get jiggy with it. All right? Let's compare my old home state of Michigan, another a state you know well, you've been there numerous times. All right? My old home state of Michigan with Sweden. 
All right. These are two states with roughly the same population, 10.2 million and 9.9 million, but two vastly different approaches to coronavirus. Bob, Michigan has probably the most draconian shutdown in America. Sweden, probably the most laissez-faire in all of the Western world. Now consider Michigan does have a lot more people per square mile than Sweden. However, Sweden's largest city, Stockholm, has twice as many people as Michigan's largest city. Stockholm has 13,000 people per square mile, just 4,800 for Detroit. All right. So demographics are pretty similar when you balance it all out. Ready for this? As of 8 a.m. Eastern this morning, Michigan was reporting 31,424 total cases. That's 0.3% of its population. Sweden was reporting 14,385 total cases, or 0.1% of its population. Sweden was reporting 1,540 deaths, or 0.01% of its population. Michigan was reporting 2,391 deaths, or 0.02% of its population. Sweden was reporting 12,295 active cases, or 0.1% of its total population. Michigan was reporting 25,796 total cases or active cases, which is 0.2% of its population. Sweden was reporting 152 deaths per 1 million per capita. Michigan, 240 deaths per capita.